Hello everyone and welcome back to my channel or welcome to my channel if it's your first time here. So today I'm going to be doing um, a recipe with um, a difference. It's from this uh, book, uh, the Geeky Chef Cookbook. Uh, this book was bought for me and it's a very uh, interesting and uh, uh, fascinating book, a very different cookbook. Um, so it's got basically it's got recipes based on um, TV, film and video games. There's various um different ones in here and you've got some inspired by star trek um some by inspired by star wars legend of zelda so there's a, a variety of different ones and i'm sure i'll do some more in the future but today we're going to do one a beef and bacon pie inspired by a song of ice and fire and a game of thrones so i'm just going to read you the little extract that um references basically where this recipe sits in the world of a song of ice and fire and game of thrones that the author has just um put in here so basically says the most memorable appearance of this pie is when Jon snow is fleeing the wall to uh, try to join up with um, rob stark after the death of edward stark uh, feeling particularly homesick he wishes he could hear bran's laugh or one of old Nan's stories, or eat one of Gage's, who was the head cook of Winterfell, uh, beef and bacon pies. So let's try Jon Snow's comfort food of choice. Um, and that's what it looks for. So I'm going to follow the recipe and um, give it a go. And um, we'll see how it comes out. Okay, so let's uh, get on with the first bit. Uh, and... Um, Let's see how this recipe goes. So the first thing we need to do is preheat the oven to 325 degrees Fahrenheit. That's 170 degrees uh, Celsius. So I've done that. Uh, and then what we need to do is we just need to um, season uh, our beef. I've got um, 454 grams of um, stewing beef that's just been cut. Uh, that's about a, a pound in weight. Because um, this is an American book, um, uh, they do give the American um, conversions first, but they've given the uh, what we tend to use in the UK um, as well, which is good, so there's no need to convert. So um, it's easy to follow, uh, depending on which country you're in. So uh, and what we need to do is season the beef with some salt and some pepper. So just season with a little salt. Give that a mix in. And then just season with a little pepper as well. Obviously when I do recipes I normally um, you know, adapt them how I want to. Um, because it's the first time doing this one and else it's a tribute to Game of Thrones I'm just Following it to the letter and see how it comes out, and then obviously you can make adjustments after. Just give my hands a wash. Okay, so then what we need to do now is it calls for the um, beef to be cooked um, in a Dutch oven. Now, if you're like me and you don't have um, a Dutch oven, um, you can use. Um, a cast iron um, casserole dish, uh, which is what I've got here. Um, and there is some um, preparation um, when you buy one of these. Um, you just need to wash it in some warm soapy water, um, which I've done because it's my first time using it. Uh, and then afterwards, um, you need to clean it out in a specific way as well, just to because they last a long time, but you do need to do some uh, things to it just to uh, prolong its life. I'm going to do a video on that, so look out for that. So if you're thinking of getting one of these or you have one, no, I can show you how to look after it. So if you don't have a Dutch oven, then um, cast iron casserole dish like this is the perfect substitute. So we seasoned the beef with salt and pepper, and now what we need to do is we need to brown the beef 
in the olive oil until it gets some good colour. You can tell it's American because it's a colour spelt without the U in it. So let's just put that on. Let's put a bit of um, oil in. I'll just let that heat a bit. Okay, so um, we just need to uh, brown the beef in the olive oil until it gets some good colour on all sides. So I think that's nearly heated up. So as well as doing this recipe the first time, it's also my first time of using one of these cast iron casserole um, dishes, but they're going to be a great addition for many different dishes. It's not quite hot enough. Just give it a couple more seconds, I think. Okay, that's uh, there now. There we go. Wash my hands. And then we're just going to brown that all over. So the recipe says just want to get uh, some good colour on it. And of course this uh, recipe would great, be great for anyone that's a fan of uh, Game of Thrones, you know, make a, say, doing a party or um, a Game of Thrones celebration or something. A different pie to um, what you might normally use to do, because it's got some different ingredients in it, as you'll see, such as the raisins that we're going to add. And so... nearly there you can see it's uh, getting some good color on it and then once we've done that we need to then um, just remove it and set aside so just let it brown all over there's a few bits just need to get a bit of color on it I'm just going to uh, get a plate and just uh, put it on the plate so that it can just uh, sit there until we need to use it for the uh, later stage. And nearly there. I'm using um, a slotted spoon to uh, for when I take the meat out because in that way um, any fat can just fall through it nearly there so I think that's about there so I'm going to um, just remove it and put it onto our plate And then the next stage, I believe, is to add the um, bacon, which it calls for 10 strips um, rather than rashers um, and doesn't give an actual quantity. So what I've done is um, I've used actually um, five rashers of bacon because if you used to cut each rasher, um uh, in half long ways uh, you'll get a strip so that will make 10 strips so that's sort of my take on it because I think if they meant 10 rashers might be a bit much but um, 
So now you're trying this for the first time. Let's pull that out. Okay, and we've got um, obviously some uh, oil and uh, fat left in there, so we won't need to add anything. And obviously the bacon is going to produce its own fat as well, so we won't need to add anything else to that. So we now need to just add the bacon, which I've just cut uh, into like um, little dices. We need to cook that until that's crispy. Like I say, I haven't added any more oil or anything because I've still got some in there from uh, what we added previously and also from the meat as well. And also the bacon will release its own fat as well. This is thick cut bacon, that's what the recipe calls for. Um, I've used unsmoked, it didn't specify um, in the recipe. Um, I've just used unsmoked, obviously. Uh, you use what you want to use. I think just as long as it's thick cut. So you just need to get that nice and crispy. I think what I've noticed so far about these um, cast iron casserole dishes is uh, the stuff doesn't stick and I think that's why it's important to um, look after them. And like I say, I will do a video I'll post that shortly, so if you want to reference how to uh, look after them. I always find personally myself that watching a video is sometimes a lot better than um, if you're reading how to do it. When you're watching someone actually do it, it sort of makes a bit more sense, I think. So that shouldn't take too long now. Uh, and then once that's nice and crispy, we've got to remove that um, as well and just set aside. Um, and then we're going to start doing, um, uh, add the carrots next. And again, we're using a slotted spoon because it says you uh, leave the bacon fat behind because we're going to cook the carrots in that so the carrots will absorb that nice flavour from the meat and the bacon as well. So I'm really excited about this recipe actually, I love trying new recipes and um, especially as this one is themed around Game of Thrones which is uh, one of my favourite TV series. Is. So it shouldn't take too long to get crispy. And the dish, as you can see, is nice and deep as well, so, you know, you're cooking any casseroles or stews, it's going to be great for that as well. And just leave to leave that maybe uh, a minute or so more just to get uh, crispy. So I would say that's now about there, so I'm just going to remove it and put it on our plate. I've just put the meat to one side and then I'm going to put the bacon on the other side. Just going to drain the fat off. Uh, and then we're going to add our carrots next to the fat that's already in there. Okay, so we're now going to add our carrots. And to uh, saute them off in the uh, bacon fat. They said add the carrots to the bacon fat and saute until they are softened. Um, and then we're going to add the onion after that. So for the carrots, we've got two carrots which have been roughly chopped, and then we need one onion uh, which we're going to add to that as well.
I think this is going to be one of those really nice, substantial um, pies. Um, and uh, of course, I mean, beef and bacon, that's a nice combination. So the carrots um, have started to uh, soften now, and we're now going to add our onion. Uh, stir around um, and it says uh, keep cooking until the onion is soft and beginning to caramelize um, and then when we get to that stage once the onion is nice and caramelized you need to add the beef back to the pan So you can already see the flavours that we're getting um, from obviously from the beef and the bacon, from the onions and the carrots. And there's still more to add as well. Not to mention the nice colours we're going to have as well. Nice orange from the carrot, we've got the onions starting to go, we'll go a nice golden colour. I am interested because, like I said, we're going to uh, the recipe calls to add raisins, and we've got some um, herbs and spice to add as well. So it's going to be interesting how that all works together. Um, obviously, you know we know we have plums with um, duck dishes often, and um, fruit is used in cooking. A fair bit, so it's going to be interesting to see how raisins will work with this dish. So that onion is starting to uh, soften now, it's starting to get a nice colour. Make sure it's all caramelised. Uh, and when you try this dish, uh, let me know how it turns out um, and what you think of it as well. And if you've got the book, what dishes have you done from the book? Um, I like said there's many in there that I'd like to try and I'll do in future videos as well. So I think that's nearly there. And then we can add our beef back. So that's nicely caramelised now, so we're now going to add the beef back to the pot. Get that all in. Okay, so give that a stir. So it says add the beef along with the red wine. Okay, so the wine we've got is um, 240 millilitres. That's one cup of red wine. Now add that in. Um, along with the beef broth. So the beef broth, we've also got the same uh, amount, 240 millilitres. That's one cup. In that goes. Oh, I can smell that uh, wine. Um, and then we also need to add um, the raisins. Now the raisins are one cup, that's 150 grams. So let's add them in. And stir. Um, and then we need to add our herbs and the spices. So the herbs we got are two bay leaves, one teaspoon of chopped uh, fresh thyme or dried, I've got dried here, and um, if you can't get fresh, and um, a half a teaspoon of ground 
allspice. So let's pop those in. So our two bay leaves and our allspice and our thyme. Let's get that mix. See that all looking lovely now. Okay, and, and then uh, once we've done that, it says use a wooden spoon to scrape up any brown bits stick into the pot and incorporate them with the broth and the wine. Okay, so we will change to a wooden spoon. Scrape around the side. And with this pot, you could sort of imagine this being cooked uh, by one of the characters in uh, Game of Thrones. It's a very sort of medieval uh, looking pot, or it's the kind of pot they'd probably have in the realm of Game of Thrones. Right, uh, so the next bit we need to do is um, uh, cover your Dutch oven or your casserole dish with the lid and transfer it to the oven to braise for one to two hours until the beef is tender enough that it can be mashed with a fork. Break the beef up into smaller pieces, this will help incorporate the gravy once done stir in the bacon. Ah, so I wonder when the bacon is going to come into it, but not yet because I'll see the meat will need a little bit more cooking compared to the bacon. So, we're going to turn that off then. Cover it with our lid. And obviously we've already preheated the oven. So we'll put that in the oven and for one to two hours, say or until the beef is tender enough that it can be mashed with a fork. Um, and then after that, it looks like you have to increase the oven temperature. Uh, oh yeah, and add the bacon and then increase the oven temperature. And then we get on to um, uh, making the dough uh, and then putting it, the pies all together. So let's get in the oven for one to two hours and then we can check that and move on to the next stage. So after about an hour, um, you can see that I can now, with a fork, break up the um, pieces of beef. So we just need to do that, and then what we're going to do is just to um, increase the oven temperature to 375 degrees Fahrenheit. That's 190 degrees Celsius. Just going to give that all the beef a bit of a mash, and that will help incorporate the gravy and then we're just going to stir in the bacon smelling lovely I must say you see how it's reduced down nicely and got a lovely color on it as well okay so let's now stir in the bacon and then that's our uh, filling for the pie done Mix that in. So the next stage is to roll out the pie dough. Um, there is a reference in the book how to make it. Obviously, I'm going to talk you through it as well. Okay, so um, we can remove bay leaves now as well because they've done their job, and that's how pie filling ready. So what we're going to do is now uh, make the pie dough and then it'll be ready to um, roll out and put into the uh, ramekins and fill with the um, delicious mixture that we have here. So to make the pastry I've got 310 grams, that's two and a half cups of all purpose flour. Um, of course in the UK we just uh, call it plain flour so that's what you need to use um, and it says about uh, 
doing this in a food processor but I prefer to do it by hand obviously um, you do it how um, you find it best uh, and then what we're going to do is we're going to add to that um, one cup or two sticks that's 240 grams of unsalted butter that has been chilled of course it's very important to keep uh, the butter chilled when making pastry and then we've also uh, got about six tablespoons of ice water uh, which I've just got in a cup here okay so let's add the butter into the flour just get that all in there and then what we're going to do is we're going to just uh, rub it into the flour and then until it resembles uh, breadcrumbs like I say you could do it in a food processor if you, uh, you find it easier I just find uh, I prefer to do it by hand you can just feel uh, better when it's reached uh, the required texture so just use your fingertips if you're doing it by hand just to rub the butter in with the flour until it comes to like a breadcrumb uh, consistency so I think that's uh, uh, more or less about there and then what we're going to do is start to add uh, the water bit by bit just until we get the required uh, consistency for the dough so that's now nicely incorporated the butter and the flour together and what we're going to do now is we're just going to add um, some cold water a little bit at a time don't do too much just do a little bit at a time so you can um, get it to the consistency required you don't want it um, too wet and sticky you just want it enough to form a ball which we're then going to divide into two one for each of our pies and there's another reason why I do it by hand because you can feel um, if it needs more water you can see in the food processor if it's coming together easy uh, of course um, let's feel that slowly coming together now you'll see it start to uh, f uh, form a ball as you incorporate the water see it all coming together now not, not might won't need too much more uh, water now might not need any actually I think it's nearly there yeah that's pretty much there now just gather up any uh, loose bits and there you have your nice uh, ball of pastry so I've divided the pastry into two balls, one for each of the pies and then what we're going to do is wrap it in some uh, cling film uh, and then we need to chill it in the fridge for at least two hours uh, and then it will be ready for us to roll out for our pies so just going to get a bit of uh, cling film and just wrap each one securely in a piece of cling film and then that will go in the fridge Okay, just do the other one and then they're ready to go in the fridge for at least two hours just to chill so the uh, dough's nicely chilled in the fridge so our two separate balls one for each ramekin and each ramekin I've just greased with some butter lightly fouled the surface so we can roll our dough out Um, and it just uh, says keep in mind that there should be enough dough left over to top the pies as well so just nice roll just turn it turning it and then we've got the desired thickness we can put it into our ramekins put a bit 
more flour on. That's nearly the right thickness. Cut a bit off for the um, lid. We can keep that bit aside and then we can line the other bit up for the main part of the pie. Let's get that in. Make sure it's tucked in the bottom. A little hole there, just patch that up. And then we can just trim away uh, any excess. Where with a knife. Going around the edge there. Just gonna make sure go slightly over the ramekin just so then we can easily join the top together. So that's that one done and then we will do the other one and then be ready to fill them. Okay so both the rubkins are now lined with uh, pastry. So what I did uh, for the lids was I just, before I did the second one, I just uh, put the ramekin on the pastry upside down um, and then just um, pushed on it to imprint out a disc um, that will then just nicely sit on top. So we're now just going to spoon um, the mixture into um, each of our pie dish. We may actually have a bit left over. Um, if we do, obviously we can make another one. Two was the suggestion. Depends on what size uh, ramekins you get as well. I believe um, the ones they suggested were um, about, uh, oh yes, it's just uh, two 12 ounce, 340 gram ramekins. So, I can say I'm excited uh, to try and see how, uh, see how the interest, see how these come out with all the different flavors we got in there from the beef and the bacon. Um, from the raisins and the spices and the herbs. It's smelling lovely. Let's get that, get that nicely in there. Uh, and then we will put the uh, lids on. Just gonna try and Get in there as much as I can. Nice, generous pie. A little bit more in there. Which of course, pies always were very generous time. Uh, generously filled in, you know, like the olden times and no doubt. Like in the Victorian Edwardian and medieval times, not skimping on feeling like you with a lot of shop pies nowadays. When you make them yourself, obviously, you can be nice and generous. So, yeah, we've got a little bit left over, there's enough I'd say there to do um, a third pie. So, it says now to yeah, roll out, roll out the remaining dough um, uh, for the ramekin lids, which we've done. Uh, cut off the excess and then crimp the edges of the pie to seal 
and then cut some vents into the top just to let the steam out so I'm just going to crimp it with finger and thumb just going around sealing it like that it doesn't say to put any egg wash on it so I'm just following the recipe you know normally it'd be a good idea to do that but I'm just going to follow it there we go nicely all the way around there and then with the other one as well So it seals it all in and then we don't hopefully get any leakage. Uh, and then this is bake the pies for about 25 minutes or until the crust is golden brown. Okay, so a couple of um, vents in the top. Just let the steam out. And they're going in at 25, uh, about 25 minutes at 375 degrees Fahrenheit and 190 degrees Celsius. And then we will see how they are when they come out uh, and give them a taste. So after about 25 minutes, they've come out nice golden colour on the top. So I'm going to give them um, a little uh, taste. Okay, so they're nice and golden all work together. Let's get that filling in there. Okay, here we go. Mmm. No spices in the raisins, you can taste them, but they're very subtle. Um, I think it actually works very well together. So I hope you um, will give it a try yourself. And for the first time, I think they've come out um, relatively well, so I'm pleased with that. So I hope you will um, give them a go yourself from uh, the Geeky Chef cookbook. Um, like I said, I'm going to do uh, some other ones in here because there's some really interesting ones based on various TV shows uh, and video games as well and films. So um, look out for that in a future video. Um, and um, if you found the... Uh, video enjoyable and you're going to try it yourself please do give the video a like and consider subscribing if you haven't done so already ring that bell for future uh, cookery videos as well as other content as well so thank you for watching and i'll see you in the next video take care bye for now